Hey, welcome to Salt City Knits. I'm Emily, and this is a podcast all about my making life. Today is January 16th, and it is a sunny but cold day here in Salt Lake City. And I finally have enough voice to record a video after three weeks of having no voice. So I'm so happy to be here, and I can't wait to share some projects and some fun news with you. But first off, you can find me on Instagram as Salt City Knits and on Ravelry. My patterns are all available also as Salt City Knits. My patterns are, many of my patterns are also available on yarnbrary.com. Um, I am still raspy, but I have had, like I said, zero voice. I lost my voice. Let's see, Christmas was on a Monday and on Thursday after I woke up being unable to speak at all, like I couldn't even squeak. Um, I could do a very quiet breathy whisper and it lasted that at that level for about 10 days. And then after that, I was able to whisper louder and then I would have moments where my voice would come back a little bit, but it would still hurt me to talk. And so even this morning, I woke up pretty much still whispering um, and I started teaching my Tuesday class at our homeschool group um, and then halfway through my class I started being able to talk again and so this is the most voice I've had in three weeks and I will tell you as you all know I am a talker it is not fair for talkers to lose their voice might be fair for everybody else around them <laughs> but I will be taking lots of sips of water as we go throughout this um, but I've been so eager to be able to share some fun projects. And so I'm really excited to be here. I am going to be sharing some finished objects, um, some works in progress and some pattern news at the end. So I will be sharing all of those things today. Okay, let's just dive right in. First off, I have to say, all of you who joined me um, for Vlogmas, thank you so much. I loved Vlogmas. I was really nervous going into it, but I really enjoyed it. And um, your comments just meant the world to me. I so appreciate them. And I um, definitely will be doing more vlogging as I go forward. Um, I really enjoyed it, so I will definitely keep that up. I also forgot to mention that I'm going to be doing a giveaway, so I will announce the details of that giveaway also at the end of this, and it's a really fun giveaway, so I'm super excited to share that with you. Okay, let's just dive right in. Um, first off, I am joining in the knit along that is being hosted by Amy of Taylor S Studio, along with her sister, Jen. The two of them are the, um, the dyers behind Dandelion and Dogwood's yarns. And you've seen me talk about Dandelion and Dogwood a lot on this channel. And they are doing a 24 in 24 challenge, which is that you knit 12 pairs of socks, one pair each month. Um, so a total of 24 socks in 2024. And so I'm always knitting socks and I thought I definitely want to join in with that. So this was my first pair of finished socks for the year. Aren't they darling? This yarn made me so happy to work with. This yarn is called Clouds and Popsicles and it's by Sock Obsession Yarns. It's a 7525 merino nylon four ply with 463 yards to 100 grams and I believe she has this in her shop right now. Um, I bought four different skeins of sock obsession yarns last year and this was the one that made me want to buy them so I love it. I think this might be one of my favorite all-time colorways. I just absolutely love it. I um, decided to design a little um, it's a, it's a ribbed pattern, but it has a fancy little texture going down the ribbing. And, um, so I will be publishing this pattern. Um, it's very simple, but I really enjoyed working it. And I knit, I've knit two pairs of this pattern so far. So 
Anyway, I just think they turned out so cute. Aren't they just adorable? I love that it's it's gray, but it's got so much white in it that it reads more, it reads white with gray speckles instead of gray, if that makes sense. And then these just tiny little blips of neon. Oh, it's just so cute. Also, here's the manicure, the current manicure. Thumbs are always hard. <laughs> something fun and bright to get us through January. <laughs> Aren't those cute? Those are going in my drawer right now. I just love them. Oh, that yarn is just so much fun. Oh, I just love them. So that is my first finished object. Here is the leftovers. <clears throat> Here's the label, Sock Obsession. Yep, Clouds and Popsicles. So very fun. Absolutely love it. <clears throat> so that was my first finished object of the year. My second finished object of the year, and this is also some pattern news, is this sample of my Mill Hollow scarf. Now, if you remember, I've shown you Mill Hollow before, before it had a name, and it is currently being tested. Um, several of my test knitters have already finished, um, and so this will be coming very soon. I'm gonna say, we'll just, we'll just say we're gonna release it February 1st. So I grabbed a single skein of yarn from my stash. This was a skein that my friend Mandy dyed. Um, she used to sell yarn under the label Gypsy Heart Designs. And this was a gift that she gave me several years ago and I've just had kind of waiting for the perfect pattern. And so here you go. I, this is a fun one because it's lightly speckled. And then as the gradient goes on, it becomes more heavily speckled along. Um, this scarf is just so fun. My two favorite ways of wearing it. You can just wrap it and tie like this. Well, maybe I want to adjust it so it's not quite so tight. Okay, there we go. And then tie your little tails like that. That's one of the ways. My favorite way though, is to wear it this way, where I fold it in half. And then I wrap it like this and just put the ends through. And then you can kind of open it up and it wears like a cowl. You can either even like open it farther and wear it like that. Isn't that fun? So I really, I've actually started wearing a lot of my my shawls this way as well. So really fun. So that one is so fun because this has been yarn that I've been saving to use for something for a long time and haven't known what I wanted to use it for. And then to be able to knit another sample of this pattern with it is just perfect because it gets to show it off. You know, you're going to show it off up by your face where people are going to get to see it but you don't have to worry about trying to pair it with anything. And it's just so fun. And I really love this lace stripe that goes down the middle and the I-cord edges <clears throat> and the garter stitch panels on either side. Anyway, Mill Hollow. So again, this is going to release on February 1st. This is my sample that I showed you before. Oh, so pretty. Knit in Yarn Cafe Creations in Gothic Teal on their Biscotti sock base. And so it's fun to see the difference between how it knit up. Um, this is a, a base with fewer yards, um, so it's a slightly plumper fingering weight base than this one is. And this one is, you know, speckled versus a more solid color. 
So I think it's fun to see the contrast between the two options. I love both of them. But you can see, I knit this one on the same needle size as this one, but that plumper yarn just makes it knit up slightly differently. I love them both. Just so fun. So that's Mill Hollow. All right. <clears throat> My next finished object. Oh, actually, let's show this one. I love this. I actually showed this on my vlogs, but I haven't shown it on a podcast yet. So I wanted to show it here. I showed it on my Vlogmas, but this is another new design that's coming up. And this is the Dixie Creek cowl. So many of you are familiar with my Dixie Creek shawl, which uses this lace pattern and stripes of garter stitch and stockinette stitch with a Pico bind off in a triangular, a wide triangular shawl. But I had a, ha a, a skein of hand spun yarn. So this is my hand spun. Oh, I love this. And I wanted to do something special with it. And so I made this cowl with it. Let's see if I can tip this a little so you can see. Come on. Mm. You can see the bottom point of it. And um, so this is a DK, excuse me, worsted weight cowl that uses one skein. So this was 200, <clears throat> I wanna say 208 yards. And I had a little bit left over of my hand spun yarn. So I will be getting this pattern written up as well but I love it. Um, it's small in the back, so it doesn't bunch up at the back of your neck. It just holds it in place nicely. So it's a great alternative to wearing a shawl that you kind of sometimes maybe have to fuss with to keep in place or pin in place because you can just literally slip it over your head and it's done. And I love the Picos. I put them a little bit farther apart with this um, heavier weight yarn than, it, than is on the Dixie Creek shawl. But it's just such a fun, easy to wear pattern. And again, showing off my hand spun up by my face where I want people to see it and admire it. You know, I love it. Um, this fiber was uh, is from by Created by created by LCB and it was called Peach, Peach something. I will, I'll, I'll put it in the show notes, <clears throat> which are below in the description box. Um, and it's a two ply worsted weight yarn. So this was my an early, fairly early skein of my hand spun. Everything I'm spinning is still early, early days because I've only been spinning since November, but oh my goodness, I just love it so much. Isn't it so pretty? Oh, if you could just tell how soft and squishy it is. I just love it. So that will be coming soon as well. I really love these one skein projects. They're so fun to be able to stash dive for. Um, but ooh, so good. Speaking of hand spun, which I didn't mention when I was telling what I was gonna talk about, I finished this skein of hand spun. This is also created by LCB. I got it at the same time and it's 100% um, super fine merino. This colorway is icicle and it's also a two ply. This is a little underspun. Um, I, I think I've been so afraid of overspinning that I've gone the other direction. So I would like to, it, and it's fine. It's totally usable. It's just a little less durable but oh, it's so pretty. And this turned out to be a sport weight. I got 334 yards to about 110 grams. 
Isn't that pretty? I'm really enjoying my spinning. I don't think I'm a very fast, I mean, not that there's any like rubric on this. <laughs> I, I take my time. I spin, <clears throat> I spin a little bit usually each day, but not for a long time. Um, when I first started, I was like spinning for hours a day, but you know, I've now settled into a nice rhythm. And so I'm working on another spin that's a combo spin. Um, but I don't think anything is at a point where I can show you, but I will definitely show you next time. So, um, anyway, but isn't that gorgeous? I cannot begin to describe the satisfaction of spinning your own yarn and then knitting with it. Oh, uh, 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 yes. It's just so happy. <sighs> okay. So the other day I was just feeling a little blah. I have been off and on sick. Well, mostly on for a long time and I've just been stuck at home and it's bleary outside and you know, just life is difficult. <laughs> just been was having a day and I wanted to cast something new on and I just kept going I don't know what I want to make I guess I could just make another pair of socks you know and I found this skein of yarn sitting in my stash and it's a sport weight but it's um, a merino nylon blend this is <clears throat> by BU fibers this is what I have left of it isn't that fun and bright and it's a sport weight it's called Sweet Iris, and it's an 80-20 merino nylon with 328 yards to 100 grams. And I thought, well, what do I want to do with sport weight? And I kept thinking, well, I don't know, I guess I could do a, I don't really want a cowl. I don't really want to make a hat right now. And I thought, well, I do want to make another pair of socks. And I don't know why it never occurred to me to make sport weight socks. Like I've seen DK socks, I've made DK socks, I've designed DK socks. I don't really enjoy wearing DK socks in my shoes. I like them for just around the house, but not in my shoes. Um, but sport weight, now that could work. That's what I was thinking. And so I knit this pair and they haven't been blocked. I don't always block my socks, especially something like this where it's um, a vanilla sock. I probably won't block it, but it is easier to show it if it has been blocked because they just lay nicely. But I just did a vanilla sock with a two by two rib and a slip stitch heel flap, my gusset and rounded wedge toe. And, um, Normally I use, I do a 64 stitch sock, although I think I might start going down to a 60, but I normally knit 64 stitches um, <clears throat> on a size 2.25 millimeter or, you know, a US one for fingering weight socks. So I was trying to decide and I started out on a US two, which is a 2.75 millimeter but it really was not the gauge that I wanted. So I, I ripped that out and went down to a one and a half, which is a 2.5 millimeter. And um, it worked great. And instead of doing 64 stitches, I did 56 stitches. And that fit, they fit beautifully. So they're thicker than fingering weight, but not as thick as DK. <clears throat> nice, firm gauge, but with lots of stretch and bounce in it. And I really, really like them. Now, I haven't worn them in my shoes yet. I've only tried them on. But I really like how they turned out. And I didn't do any contrasting or anything. I don't really have much sport weight in my stash. So I think I need more, though, because this is brilliant. I love it. So they just feel so nice. They just stretch out so nice. And I think they're going to feel just fine in my shoes but they are gonna be that little extra bit warmer. So I love that. And this is a very variegated yarn. This, um, what did I say it was? Iris, something Iris. <clears throat> Sweet Iris. Um, 
and I just let it, you know, do its thing. I, I like how it looks in the leg. I'm not super fond of these areas around the gusset where it really kind of flashes and pools together. I actually don't know the difference between flashing and pooling. I should look that up. But they match each other quite well, which I appreciate. You know, they're not perfect, but they're pretty, pretty close. So that's great. So I think that I will probably make more DK weight, or excuse me, sport weight socks in my future. But I'm going to give these a try in my shoes and see how they work. One of the things that I did to figure out ratios um, is I, I measured gauge with the fingering weight yarn. And then once I got kind of the feel, I mean, this did take some, some, what am I looking for? Finagling, some trying and retry, experimenting. That's what I'm looking for. Some experimentation to make sure I liked the gauge I was getting on the needle. And then I measured my gauge again, and it was about 80%. So we were looking at 80% of the, um, if I, if I divide the smaller number, which is my gauge stitch for the sport weight, by the larger number, which was my gauge for the fingering weight, it was 80%. So I decided to try, I didn't wanna do the math for 80% because 75% is so much easier to do. So 56 stitches is 75% of 64 stitches. So I thought, well, let's try that. And I knit about this much of it at 56 and it fit just great. So I think it also helps that my, like I said, my 64 stitch count is a little bit big on me. So these fit actually better than that. All right. <clears throat> Those are all my finished objects for right now. So let's talk about a couple of works in progress. So first off, look at my gorgeous Laura Ashley patchwork bag by So Sweet Violet. Isn't that just beautiful? I got this last year and I love it so much. It's nice and big, which is perfect for holding a sweater, which is what I have in here. So the dilemma last, you know, as I was talking about it I, through Vlogmas and in my last podcast, I was trying to decide what to, what sweater pattern to make with my dandelion and dogwood advent calendar from 2022. And that year was the one that was inspired by the rose gardens. And so it has all kinds of different um, names of roses. And I just realized the ends of my... This stitches have come off the needle. Give me one moment. Just pop those back on there and we'll fix them in a bit. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so just beautiful, beautiful colors. And you won't be able to see it because you never can on video, but th these are all on their fairy sock base. So they're gorgeously sparkly and so pretty. So this is what I have so far in this sweater. I am knitting a pattern by Hohi Locatelli and it is called something, Magnolia Cardigan. So it is a drop shoulder cardigan. She has um, garter stitch happening just across the shoulder. I did not, I choose, chose not to do that. Mine is all stockinette. But it's drop stitch, V-neck, and um, the only thing that I'm, well, I, I took the garter stitch out of that top and just did stockinette. And I am also adding some A-line increases to the sides. I am quite, I would say pear shaped, pear with like skinnier legs coming up. <laughs> I carry my weight through my lower belly and my hips and my butt. So I need to have, 
I'm smaller on top than I am on bottom. And so I need things that do this shaping for me. And so it is really common for me in a cardigan to add extra increases along the side seam underneath the arms. I don't think I did that in this cardigan. This cardigan, by the way, what is the name of this one? I can never remember. I'll put this in the name of this cardigan in the um, description box below. But this one was knit also with dandelion and dogwood yarns. I've worn this before and talked about it before, but the color is What's Eating Gilbert Grape. I have another really fun project I will show you next time coming up with this exact same yarn. It's just the most beautiful purpley color. Oh, just so pretty. Anyway, back to this one, Magnolia Cardigan. So I have been increasing along the sides here. Um, let's see, where is my increase line? Let's see if you can see it at all. A little bit, you can. But I am just using the mini skeins as they, um, using up as like the whole mini. And I will then add in the sleeves, which will start about right here and just come down, um, and the ribbing and the ribbing on the bottom will all be out of um, kind of semi-solid uh, colorway. <clears throat> this is the one I'm going to for sure use for the ribbing at the bottom of the hem and the ribbing, the, the button band. Depending on how much that takes, I may be using, I'll probably use it for the cuffs of the sleeves too. I'm guessing I won't have enough to use this one for the sleeves themselves as well. But I have another semi-solid, do I have, it's similar to this. I don't think it's this one. Yeah, I don't think it's this one, but it's similar to this one that I would use for the sleeves. But I'm coming to the end of things. So I've got, let's see how many I have left. I have this many, I have six stripes left before the ribbing. So six stripes, one, two, three, four, five. So I have this much, this is one, two, three, four, five. Is that right? One, two, three, yeah. So this is how much I have to go in the length <clears throat> of the body. And it will be slightly less than that because of my A-line increases. Um, and then I will add the ribbing at the bottom. But it's just gonna be a striped sweater. And I am really enjoying that. But I find that it's just a lot of stock in that stitch. So it's hard for me to feel really motivated to just keep going and keep going, unless I have like a good movie or something like that to keep my attention. So that's the only downside of it is the, the knitting itself is kind of to that just boring mindless part, which is good in some ways and also eh in some ways. I think it just depends on what you like. And I tend to like something with a little more interest. Um, but I really love how that's coming out. I think I'm gonna really enjoy that. It'll just be pretty and pink. Um, I do have one other striped cardigan in my closet, but I don't really wear it that much. And it's more about the fit than anything. I'm trying to think about why I don't. It's higher necked. I really like V-necked things. The more and more I knit, the more I realize that. I, I like me in V-necked shirts and I like my cardigans to be either V-neck or kind of just an open. And that one is very much a, you know, rounded neck and then straight down and it fits that way so it's up by my neck. I think that's why I don't wear it as much because it fits me through the body beautifully, but it's just that part. Anyway, okay, my last work in progress is right here. I have this whole bag. This tends to be my, this Black Pearl Magic bag that I got from my sister for Christmas. Not this last Christmas, but the one before. I just tend to keep my little bits and bobs, my favorite little ones in there. And I have started another 
granny stripe blanket. So I am using <clears throat> a US size D hook, which is a three millimeter hook. Let me pull that little loop up. And I have just started. I mean, I'm just this much into it. And I started out with how many chains? 280 something, 286. So it's a wider, a little bit wider blanket. And this will be a long-term project. But just that little beginning is so pretty. It makes me so happy. And I'm just grabbing my little bits out of the bag as we go along. But oh my goodness, I'll tell you what, this is going in there for sure. At least some of this, not probably not the whole thing, but some of that is going to go in there. It'll just play so nicely with these colors. I'm definitely going to try and keep these more pastel. So I have some things like this one, which is beautiful. Oh, well, that's probably going to go just great. Well, I have like, okay, this one. Well, I don't know. We'll see. I've got some really like, oh. Knocking down my water. I caught it. Like this. Super brilliant blue. It's probably not going to go in there. Just going to try and keep the pastels going as much as possible. Slightly to the brighter end of pastel, but... Oh, so pretty. And I think that my previous one, I knit at least one hook, or crocheted at least one hook size larger. <clears throat> but I'm really liking this gauge. I like the way it's looking. It's just so pretty and fun. So that is going to be good. I have, I need to go back downstairs to my sewing room and pull out all the little bits. So I have this tendency to kind of sort my scraps by how many grams are left. If they're teeny tiny little pieces, they go in this one basket. If they're more like what I would call a partial skein. They'll go in this big like candy jar that I have, which is completely full and I need to pull stuff out of there. And then if they're kind of, I don't know, gumball size, they go in this bag. And then I've got others that are just like, four things that were all in one project together, that they're all in another bin. Like I just got stuff everywhere. So yeah, I need to pull things out, sort through them, get my colors more, um, sort them more by color and not just by the size of the mini or the leftover. The other thing I have is um, I have that marled blanket project that I showed some time ago that my daughter-in-law mostly works on when she's here and I've got tons of leftovers in that bag that I could pull from as well I should go back and look at, I haven't looked at it really in a long time but there's a lot of yarn in that bag <laughs> okay I can already tell that I'm using this voice quite a bit so I am going to start wrapping up so let's talk shop news so I wanted to first of all announce that Backcountry is now out and available. It is on Ravelry. Here is the Backcountry shawl. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, and I have had four different um, yarn dyers who have been offering kits for Backcountry shawls in their stores. So you should definitely check them out. There's Yarnaceous Fibers, Candy Shop Yarns, Big Sky Yarn Co, and Yarn Cafe Creations. You will want to check out the video that was posted right before this video, and I will link to that in the, in the description box below for discount codes. Um, I do not know all the expiration dates of those discount codes, so you will want to go to their shop and check them out yourself. Um, but there are beautiful, beautiful yarns, and I featured all of those in my previous video. So, but I just wanted to share that again, and thank you to all of my test knitters and everybody who's helped bring this one out. Um, this is another one that I have, and it cr clashes horribly with what I'm wearing right now. But it is another fun one. You fold it in half, 
tuck your ends into your middle here and pull it up like that. And look how fun that is, to, a fun way to wear a shawl. Isn't that neat? Any shawl that is longer than it is deep is gonna work for this style. And I really, I've worn this one several times with this method. Um, again, what clashes horribly with what I'm wearing. It makes this look dull and this look garish. And both of them are beautiful, just not together. <laughs> anyway, oh, it's just so fun. And I love wearing this with like my denim jacket. And I have a really pretty um, kind of like prairie um, dress that's, it's kind of a cream color background with tiny little marigold type flowers printed on it. I love wearing this with that dress and my denim jacket. It's so cute. Um, so that is my first shop news. The second news is that Mill Hollow is coming out February 1st. So keep an eye open for the, that information um, and that release date. I will definitely put a video up when it is available. And um, what else is coming up? I have a fun collaboration that's coming up with Yarnaceous Fibers and just some, some fun projects that will be coming up. And I will have two cowl patterns and a sock pattern all coming up um, in the near future. So there's lots happening. So now I need to talk to you about the giveaway. So let me be right back with that. All right, for Christmas, my sister Deborah and I, great minds think alike. And we both bought each other this present. So we each got the other a cord smith. Have you seen these? These are for making eye cord. And they have three little hooks. They're like a latch hook. So they have the little latches that come up. And you use them to make eye cord. Um, instead of having to knit one stitch at a time, you can wrap your yarn and pull all three stitches through at once. And you can just make amazing eye cord with them. So the great thing is, is I saw these and I thought I have to have one and I've got to get one for my sister. So I did. Well, she did the same thing. <laughs> she got one and she got one for me. <laughs> so now we both have two cord smiths and we both got each other identical colors. So it just cracks me up. So here is another one that's a brand new one, all wrapped up still, but it's identical to the one I have. So I am giving this one away because how great is that tool? So, such a cool tool. Um, you can definitely check out, um, just, just search for Cordsmith and you'll be able to find all kinds of information about these. But they are a hot item, I'll tell you. So I was thinking, okay, what can we do? What would be a fun giveaway for us to do with the Cordsmith, for the Cordsmith? So I decided what we're going to do is just do a knit along. So this is a Salt City Knits pattern knit along. You can knit any of my patterns and enter to win the Cordsmith. So this is going to run through until the end of March. So pick out your pattern now. So if you want to wait for Mill Hollow, you can do that. Or if you want to knit a pair of socks, you can do that. You've got my Alta hat. Um, there's several different shawls. You've got Ochre um, Sunset. You've got Dixie Creek, um, Sugar House, um, Good Cheer, Scrappy Bias shawl. You can do any one of those and post it on Instagram. And just make sure to tag Salt City Knits Cal. And um, whips are included in that. Um, you can double dip into other, um, into other knit alongs. So for example, if you decide to knit like a pair of Gathering Shells socks, then you could enter that into the Salt City Knits Cal. Or, or, and you could also knit it into the Taylor S Studio and Dandelion and Dogwood 24 in 24, um, which is the, the sock knit along that I mentioned early on. So that's just one example. 
So you can knit any Salt City Knits pattern and um, every time that you post about your project and tag with that, that tag, Salt City Knits Cal, you'll be entered to win the Cord Smith. And I'm sure there will be more prizes in addition coming along. This will not be the only one. I'm guessing some yarn is gonna show up, some patterns, you know, who knows what else could be entered into that. But I will be drawing um, for this prize at the very least at the end of March. So you've got plenty of time. So join in to this cow with me and pick out your pattern. And please comment below and let me know which patterns you're considering for the knit along. Um, I know for sure I'm gonna be making more Mill Hollow scarves. I have already knit three. Um, one I knit uh, in the design process, so it's a little bit different than these two. And then I've knit these two. And I have three more skeins that are slated for for a mill hollow because they just are ones that I want to wear up by my face, you know, and they're just so perfect and easy to wear. So that's a great idea, but what, let me know what you would be, what you would want to make. And I'll keep you posted on what other prizes show up along the way, but a cord Smith is definitely going to be one of the prizes. <clears throat> okay. I think that's everything. I can definitely tell that my voice is starting to leave. But I made it through and I'm so happy. I miss talking to you guys. And as long as I have a voice, then I will keep coming back, <laughs> hopefully weekly. That was though that's been my plan. Um, we are gonna be going soon. I'm not gonna say specific dates, but we're gonna be heading down to Arizona for a trip. Um, and I'm really so looking forward to some sunshine crossing my fingers that that's the, the forecast right now for what I can see looks great there, but you know, crossing my fingers that we'll be able to enjoy that. So we're, I'm just so looking forward to that and trying to think about like what projects I'm going to take. What is your favorite project to take on like a road trip? I love road trips. For me, the road, like the driving is a huge part of the vacation. I think a lot of that is because my husband loves to be the driver and I love to be the passenger princess. So it works out great for me because I can just knit and have snacks and be in charge of the radio, right? That works out great for me <laughs> and take a nap whenever I want to. <laughs> Whereas if I had to drive the whole time, I probably wouldn't be as big of a fan of road trips, but I love road trips. And um, so we're going to take Isaac and Abby. Isaac's bringing his girlfriend, Jess. And Abby is probably going to bring one of her good friends. And um, we're going to get some sunshine. It's going to be so nice. Anyway, but I cannot wait to get some, get, get, get away and have a little trip together. So I got to be thinking about my projects. All right, that's everything that I have today. Thank you for joining me. Um, I look forward to knitting along with you in the next few months. And um, don't forget to share what your favorite like road trip or travel projects are to take. And I mean, tell us pattern names and stuff if you have them. We would love to hear that. <clears throat> and definitely go read what other people post because that's the best part of having those posts is to see what other people post, right? All right, I will be back hopefully next week and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.